Hello boys and girls, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again. Today's lesson is all about ruling the neck with moulds. Right, well that solo that you just heard me play there was, as you could see, using the A Dorian mode. And I'm going to be basically showing you how to take regular pentatonic licks that you're hopefully quite familiar with and turn them into modal licks of the type that you heard in that solo. Uh, I need to make sure that you're okay with a couple of other things first though. Uh, basically in order to make this work along the whole length of the neck uh, you need to be pretty well versed in the pentatonic scale. Basically you need to know all five patterns of the pentatonic scale. Also it would help if you had a reasonable understanding of the theory of moulds. But don't worry if you're not really up to speed on either of those things because coming up next is a brief recap on both of them. Okay, now you've got the pentatonic shapes under your belt, let's have a quick recap on the small amount of music theory you need to know to make use of modes. Let's have a quick recap then on what we mean by a mode. Now then, if we take a look at the key of G major, then that has the chords of G, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor and F sharp minor 7 flat 5 in it which incidentally is nothing more complicated than an A minor chord but with an F sharp bass note so it's nothing to worry about really. Now then what you can do is take any one of those chords and write a chord sequence around it so that that chord is the focal point, the centre of attention basically. But crucially, all of the chords in the chord sequence must come from this key of G major. And that is what is meant by a mode. You are taking the major key and you are focusing on one chord in particular. And depending upon which of those chords you are making the musical centre of gravity, as I like to say, of your chord sequence, we have different names for those modes. For example, as you can see here, if you're in the key of G major and you make the G chord the focus of proceedings, that is called the Ionian mode. If you choose to centre everything around the A minor chord, that is the Dorian mode. 
putting the B minor chord centre stage gives us the Phrygian mode, uh, the C major chord, if we make that the focus of proceedings, that is called the Lydian mode, the D major chord, if we focus on that, that is the Mixolydian mode, uh, the E minor chord gives us something called the Aeolian mode and the F sharp minor 7 flat 5 chord if you could somehow find a way of making that chord sound like it was an attractive proposition to focus on then you would be in the Locrian mode or some people say Locrian. Here's an example. Shown below is a chord sequence based around the A minor chord, but all of the chords in that chord sequence are from the key of G major. There is only one key where all of those chords, the A minor, the D, the C and the G, can all exist together, and that is the key of G major. But the focal point of it all, the tonality, the chord that all roads seem to lead back to is the A minor chord. Have a listen. <laughs> you will agree that that does really sound centered on that A minor chord, even though technically we're in the key of G major. The reason we're in the key of G major is because of the chords we're using. A minor, D major, C major and G major can all only exist together in one key, and that is the key of G major. Yes, they will all occur elsewhere in other keys, but there's only one key where they all crop up together, and that's the key of G major. Hence, we're in the key of G major. And if we're in the key of G major and focusing on the A minor chord, that means that this piece of music was in the Dorian mode. And that really is what modes are all about. It's the art of viewing a key from the perspective of one of the chords within that key, which needn't necessarily be the key chord, like the chord of G major in the key of G major, for example. Right, let's move on to seeing how we can make use of all of this to play some lead guitar. Okay, if you had a chord sequence like the one you heard in the previous clip to play some lead guitar over, then you would probably use a scale pattern like this. This is the pattern for the A Dorian mode scale. And as you can see, lurking within that scale, there is an A minor pentatonic scale, hopefully a nice familiar pattern. And if you think about it, any guitar solo, any piece of music for that matter, is only ever a combination of long notes and short notes. So to use this scale pattern to play A Dorian, what you would do is make sure that you focused on the A minor pentatonic scale. Those are going to be the notes that provide your long notes in the kind of long note, short note balance of your guitar solo. And just add in the extra notes, the notes that aren't part of the pentatonic, as the kind of connective tissue that joins it all together, if you like. I'll show you some licks at the end of this clip so you can see the kind of thing I mean, where you can take a pentatonic lick and kind of step it up to being a Dorian mode lick by the inclusion of those extra notes. Now then, what you can also see in this uh, scale pattern that we've so far called a Dorian is that there are other pentatonic scales lurking in there. For instance, you can see the C major pentatonic. Now the C major pentatonic is the same thing as the A minor pentatonic. You're just viewing it from a different root note. And if you view this scale pattern from the perspective of the C note, the C major tonality, then you get the C Lydian mode. And just again, do exactly the same thing as you did for the A Dorian mode. Focus on the pentatonic and add in the extra notes as and when you feel like it, basically, just to join it all together. And it doesn't stop there, because if we take a look at the pattern again, you can see there's a B minor pentatonic lurking within there as well. And if you concentrate on the B minor pentatonic, then you get the B Phrygian mode. Once again, the B minor pentatonic in this instance would be the core scale. Those would be the long notes of your long note, short note mix in your solo. So just concentrate on the B minor pentatonic, add in the extra notes as and when you feel like it, and you've got the B Phrygian mode. 
that you would use over a B Phrygian mode chord sequence, obviously. And once again, the B minor pentatonic can also be viewed as a different pentatonic. This time it's D major. Flipping the focus round to the D root note of the D major pentatonic gives us the D mixolydian mode. And obviously that's what you would use over a D mixolydian mode chord sequence. And there's one more pentatonic lurking inside of all of this. If you look here, you can see the E minor pentatonic which if you focus on that aspect of the scale will give you the E Aeolian mode which once again you would use over an E Aeolian mode chord sequence and again you can flip this round to its relative major root note which in the case of E minor is G so this would be a G major pentatonic and that would give you the G Ionian mode so there you have it you can get six different modes the Dorian, the Lydian, the Aeolian, the Ionian, the Phrygian, and the Mixolydian, all from one scale pattern. All you have to do in each case is focus on a different core pentatonic scale in the way I've described. Now, as you move to other frets, obviously you would use other scale patterns, but at the core of each one of those, you will find a, hopefully, familiar pentatonic shape that you can base everything around. Okay, as promised, here are a few examples of how you can take a regular pentatonic type lick and add in one or two extra notes to make it into a modal lick. In this first example, I'm taking an A minor pentatonic lick and adding in an F sharp and a B note to make it into an A Dorian mode lick. All the while, there is an A Dorian mode chord sequence just kind of bubbling away underneath to give it some context. In the graphics on the screen you'll see the scale pattern that I'm using and in the case of the uh, Dorian mode lick you will also see the core pentatonic highlighted. Anyway, here it is. Okay, next up we're going to take a D minor pentatonic lick and by the addition of an E note and a B flat note we end up getting the D Aeolian mode. Here it is. And just for good measure, one final example where I take an E minor pentatonic lick and add in a C note and an F note, which gives us the E Phrygian mode. Here it is. Right, so hopefully you can see that it's not a big task to simply take one of your existing pentatonic licks from your repertoire and um, add in a couple of extra notes and suddenly you're playing a mode based solo. The thing that stumps many people, the, the kind of stumbling block along the way really, is knowing which mode to use. I mean sure you can go back through all of the theory and kind of learn it and, and be um, you know, incredibly studious about it, and you will do that eventually anyway, but what's the, the kind of bluffer's way of doing it? Well, here are a few telltale signs to know which mode that you're in. Let's start with the Ionian mode. Any chord sequence where you have, say, an A like that will base everything around a root note of A. An A chord where you go to a, a D and an A. Or 
any of the associated minor chords along the way as well. Anything where you basically got that going on, you are in the Ionian mode. There you go. Uh, another major mode that's um, quite a popular one is the Lydian mode. And the thing that characterises the Lydian mode is if we start around an A chord here, we would also have the B major chord in there as well. Okay? And um, typically a Lydian mode chord sequence would possibly tend to use a, a constant uh, bass pedal note underneath everything. So if I was to take an A chord to a B chord to an E chord back to an A again and play an A bass note underneath all of that to uh, anchor it around the A tonality, it might sound something like this. Typical classic um, Lydian mode. And anytime you hear or see anything like that in a song, that you know you are in the Lydian mode. The final uh, major mode is the Mixolydian. Uh, Mixolydian mode is based upon the fifth chord within a key. So if we're basing everything around an A chord, that puts us into the key of D major because the A chord is the fifth chord in the key of D major. And like when we had the Lydian mode where we had our tonality chord, the A, and we went up two frets, a tone, and had to use a B chord. Well here it's the opposite way around. Basically any time you're kind of centred around an A chord and you end up going down to a G and then settling back on the A chord again, then chances are you're going to be in the Mixolydian mode. Typical Mixolydian mode chord sequence might go something like this. Fairly familiar sounding, I can think of probably a dozen or so songs that have that kind of thing going on and that's what the Mixolydian mode sounds like. So moving on to the minor modes, um, we'll look at the Dorian first of all. Again, a very easy one to spot because any time you have an A minor, if we're sticking around um, a reference root note of A, A minor, going up to a D major, then you're in the Dorian mode. And obviously you can transpose that and any of these examples into any key. For instance, if you had G minor going up to a C chord, you'd be in G Dorian. But let's keep it centered around here. So you've got A minor going up to a D major. That puts you in the um, Dorian mode. It's very easy to sound quite sort of Santana-ish with this one. Um, this kind of thing. so on. It's very easy to give it that kind of Latin-y kind of feel. The next minor mode along from the uh, Dorian is the Phrygian which is based around the third chord in a major key. So if we're thinking in terms of A minor, A minor is the third chord in the key of F major. And in the key of F major we have a B flat chord. So the dead giveaway for A Phrygian would be if you were going from an A minor up to a B flat and settling back on the A minor again and it's got a sort of quite characteristic Spanish-y kind of sound um, something like this that kind of thing um, it's that kind of uh, flat ninth going up to the B flat which makes it sound like the Phrygian mode. And the final um, minor mode is perhaps the most popular one in uh, rock and pop music. It is the Aeolian mode. Um, very very easy to spot. A couple of ways that you can do this. Uh, remember when we looked at the Ionian mode and I said that anytime you have this kind of relationship Turn all those chords into minors, so it becomes instead of an A, an A minor, instead of a D, a D minor, instead of an E, an E minor, you're going to be in the uh, Aeolian mode. So A 
very popular um, little move that happens in a lot of the Aeolian mode songs is to go from the tonality chord, in this case A minor, down to an F. So, you know, that's that kind of thing. Uh, it, this is in the wrong key, but you can kind of begin to hear things like Sultans of Swing in there, can't you? That kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's um, a little bluffer's guide to being able to tell what mode the song that you need to play a solo is in. Hope you found it useful. Coming up next is uh, a little bit of a solo where I go through all six modes of um, A. So basically A Ionian to A Lydian to A Mixolydian, then A Dorian to A Phrygian and finally A Aeolian and um, then there's a jam track for you to have a go at doing the same thing. And here's a jam track for you to have a go at uh, using those modes in a solo. You'll see the scale patterns uh, on the screen and you can also download a PDF, printer friendly PDF of those same scale patterns from the description box below.
Right, well hopefully you managed to do something with those modes over that backing track and if you want you can have a little bit of an extended go at that using the extended jam track uh, that you can also download from the description box below. Basically instead of 8 bars in each mode you'll find that there are 32 bars in each mode so that's 32 bars Ionian, 32 bars Lydian, 32 bars Mixolydian and so on. And uh, that pretty much concludes the lesson for today. I do hope you found it useful, informative and maybe even a little bit inspiring. And if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition in any style, whether you want to learn about modes or whether you want to learn about finger style, folk, guitar picking, anything you want, give me a shout via the details at the end of this video and your first lesson is free. And if you like listening to uh, guitar based music, and why else would you be here, um, then you might want to check out my new album. It's called The Whiskey Made Me Do It. and. If you're a fan of Gary Moore, Joe Satriani, Joe Bonamassa, all that kind of great guitar stuff, then you're probably going to uh, really enjoy this one as well. Uh, as I say, it's called The Whiskey Made Me Do It, and it's available on iTunes, uh, Amazon, Google Play, Spotify, all the usual places basically. And in the description box below, I will also put some links to where you can get the album. Right, that's it for now, folks. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.